Welcome back, everybody, uh, to the Brotherhood Podcast. We're here in uh, Chicago. I'm here with a uh, pleasure tonight, a Duke legend. Let me read off your uh, your stats here quickly. A 1,500-point career sorry, career points scored at Duke, one of just seven players in Duke history to record 1,000 points and 500 assists. You set a Duke record with a career assist to turnover ratio of, do you know it? No. 2.52 to 1. Uh, the captain of the 2015 Duke National Championship team, an All-American that year, and then a two-time NBA champion, Quinn Cook, here tonight. Thanks for, uh, thanks for taking the time and being here in Chicago. Uh, you just flew in late tonight. Um, to be here for the dinner, what was your what was your take on on everything tonight? It was pretty pretty cool yeah. to be a current player here and yeah. see you guys come back. No, nah, it's fun, man. Um, I remember you know being obviously a player and, and and being a student at Duke, but taking retreats and taking trips and sometimes when you're when you're in it, you know you're kind of like, man, why we got to do this? I'd rather just stay on campus or I'd rather be home. But um, once you get on that plane, once you get in a hotel with the guys, um, everything just you know. It's a reason why you do it, and just to sitting at the table with you guys today has just brought back a lot of memories. I felt like I was 18, 19 years old. So, um, nah, I'm I'm so happy that you know Coach John invited me. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a big deal. Um, and uh, for the the people listening, we're here in Chicago on strictly a, a team bonding trip, essentially. Um, I think we were up to go potentially overseas. Did you guys have a foreign tour when you were here? Yeah, my freshman year, we went to China and Dubai. So we, we we were gone for a minute, but we went to uh, Beijing and Shanghai, and then we spent I think two days in Dubai to finish. So that was fun. I was hurt at the time, so yeah. I was rehabbing the whole time with Jose and Nick. So I didn't really get to play, and I didn't get to play, but I didn't get to really um, experience everything like the other you know players did. But you know something I can always say that I went to China and Dubai with the team my freshman year. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys played games over there, right? I yeah, mean. so we played two games against China. China. We played in Shanghai, Beijing, and then we played, I don't know what team it was in Dubai, but I remember it was funny because the day of the game, we went to the water park, like literally the, the day this. of the game. I've heard about that. And then I think like the first quarter, like, and I think we were playing quarters too, but the first quarter, we were probably down by two Coach Case rips. It's like, you guys want to be at the water park out there? I'm like, Coach. Y'all told us, y'all told us we could go. Whoa, well, Joe's like he was on the slides with us. Kate was on the slides with us, and they're like mad at us. Like man, y'all was just with us too. So nah, it was fun. It was fun. We ended up blowing that team out, but uh, that was fun. Absolutely. No, it's a big. It was it was cool as a current player to see you guys there tonight. Uh, you and a few of your teammates. Um, what you know, I was asking you about the brother in general because um, one of the biggest like surprises for me. I didn't grow up a huge. Duke fan, yeah. so I just didn't know, and uh, you know I'd heard like the brotherhood, but yeah. every team has yeah. you know like a mantra a saying, so I just figured it was something that was said here, <laughs> and uh, for me it was kind of like a shell shock when you get here, like oh it's it's serious, like it's the real thing, like being at K Academy and like events like this, yeah. um, you realize that it's not just something that's said. So, you know, what does the brotherhood kind of mean to you? Obviously, yeah. you've been around a ton. I know you've been to I think K Academy the last two years, yep. uh, maybe more than that, but. You know, what kind of effect has that had on you and, and what keeps on bringing you back to events like this? Yeah, it's authentic. You know, obviously, um, you know, when you're going through your whole recruiting, you know, process as a recruit, um, you, your parents, your coaches, however, you know, you handle it. Obviously, every coach is going to tell you, my former players are this, the former players here, the network here at this university is this. But I can honestly say, like, you know, um, obviously my brother went to Duke, um, Nolan. So I started to come to Duke, you know, um, a lot, like when he was a freshman. So I was a freshman in high school. So um, I would just see so many players like come back and not just like just be there if they were in the NBA, just come around on their NBA stuff, but like really like coming back to school, like coming back, really working out with Coach Will. Like I know a lot of players like Gerald Henderson, like when he was playing in Charlotte, like he would make it a key to come back and get work by Nick and Jose, like lift with. Um, Coach Will, and then you will see guys like Sean Dockery and Grant Hill, and you will have all these relationships with all these guys. So about like my sophomore, junior year, like I really felt like I played with some guys who played in the 90s. Even though I was born in 93, I felt like I played with Ricky Price and I played with um, Trajan Lane. You know what I'm saying? All these guys, and so it was just authentic. And then being on the outside as soon as I graduated, just 
seeing the love and support that I got in different NBA arenas. Even when I played in the G League, like, um, I hadn't won any NBA champions yet. I never – championships yet. I never played with the Warriors or Lakers or anybody. But nine times out of ten, it was going to be at least 30 Duke fans in the arena. So, um, just that brand and just the brotherhood and just that – just love that you get from people, it, it was real. So, the brotherhood is definitely – um, I think the perfect slogan for what Duke is and represents. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you sat next to, uh, you were next to Caleb, O'Kill guy, yep. and uh, with Jeremy and Jared. What's your, what your take on our young guys? Because it's tough yeah, for me. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard for me as a, I'm 23. Yep, yep. yep and yep. Uh, these dudes that are coming in are 18. So yep, it's, sure. uh, it's interesting to have a conversation with them. How would just what's your take on our, our yeah. guys? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I know, you know, I remember when, Kayla was a sophomore in high school. Yeah. I remember going to see, you know, going with John and Nolan and um, Carwell seeing him on the circuit. Um, and I obviously always vouch for him because, you know, he was going to Oak Hill at the time. So, I mean, obviously, Jeremy, I've known him since he was a kid coming from the same area. And obviously, meeting Tyrese last year um, and hanging out with him this summer um, at K Academy. And, you know, he, he he's definitely the life. <laughs> The, the the life of the room. So uh, definitely, you know, a fan of their games, but, you know, just love how they are off the court and just love how they are together. You know, they got, you know, a great bond. And I think, you know, you know that trio right there along with Jared is is those four, man, it's, it's, a, it's a special group for sure. Oh, absolutely. What, you know, one of the things uh, that Coach Shire mentioned tonight, and you talked a little bit about it, having a similar – setup that you guys did in 2015 you know your your returner uh you were the lone senior you know we have a few old guys but a lot of young returners and then a lot of exciting freshmen coming in can you just talk about that 2015 season what made it so special uh your role and then the team overall yeah um it was a special year um i think um the end of the year before that kind of you know springboarded that motivation um not just me but in everyone in coach and Coach Will and uh, Kenny King and, and everybody in the program just felt they had to step it up a notch. And for me, like, um, as soon as school ended, like, I never went home. I stayed on campus. Um, I worked with Coach Will every single day. Um, I wanted to be in the best shape possible. Um, I had a heart to heart with Coach K that obviously he talks about now, but um, kind of really changed my life. And obviously with Tyus and Ja and Grayson and Justice coming in, especially Tyus, you know, I think everybody wanted me to come off the bench or get off the ball or like, you know, it's a tie as a team now. Um, and you can create animosity between the, I've been here, I've been the starting point guard the last three years. Like, what do you mean? Because we lost in the first round. I got to go because mm. we didn't end the right way. But instead of being like, I'm going to kill Tyus or forget Tyus, I came in like, I want to help Tyus and I want us to be, you know, um, two point guards on the floor, two floor generals on the floor, two coaches on the floor. And him, Jaleel, as big as they were, they were the two best players in that class. As big as Justice was, as big as Grayson was, they came in so selfless, selfless and so humble. Just that really springboarded our season. And uh, you could just see it in the summer. Obviously at Duke, the talent you see and pick up, you just see, you know, the talent that's in the room. But that togetherness and that bondness that we had just – um, I knew it was going to be a special year, and not just saying that because we ended up winning, but I knew it. And then when we played Wisconsin, we beat Wisconsin, a team that went to the Final Four, that brought their whole team back who was old. When we beat them at Wisconsin, I, I felt like, you know, we could win a national championship. And we did everything um, the right way that year, and uh, we got it done. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you talked about guys like, you know, settling into their roles, and it's it's so difficult, especially at a place like Duke. You have such talent you have every year you know I felt like last year we had eight to nine guys that you know have the talent and want to be in the league next year and it's difficult you know only what one to two maybe three guys can average the numbers and the yeah. minutes to do that um, what kind of advice do you have for like the guys that are in the position now how do you get a team to mold to that fashion where you have so much star power yeah. uh, guys coming back kids coming in that are trying to make yeah. a name for themselves how do you get a group, how do you get everybody to commit to their roles to put winning first when, yeah. you know, it's just, it's hard to do it with so many guys that, you know, it doesn't make them selfish, but so many guys that want to get to the next level for sure. immediately. For sure. No, I mean, great question. Um, that's what Duke is. I mean, um, you got three to four McDonald's All-Americans coming in, not yeah. just 
you know, highly rated players or, you know, obviously we're all the, probably the best um, players on our high school teams or AAU teams respectively, but we got the best of the best coming in every year. So um, it's an ongoing cycle and obviously it's a good, it's a good problem to have, you know, a lot, a lot of talent, but Grayson, I think kind of hit on the head tonight in, 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 in what he said was just, I just think just being selfless and not worrying about that stuff, worrying about the draft boards, boards, worrying about now you got to worry about NIL deals. Yeah. It's just it's just so much you guys have to deal with. Um, I couldn't even imagine social media at an all time high. But my thing was always every team I've been on, like winning cures everything. Mm -hmm. If you want to go high in the draft, because obviously you got to be, you know, you make the decision for yourself to come to Duke and do everything for yourself. So obviously that you have to have that in mind. But I think everybody you know, it's better off when you win. Everybody yeah. goes higher, I think. Everybody, you're going to get more money, and I, yeah, whatever whatever your goal is, if you win, I think it enhances whatever you want to do. And like Coach John said tonight, like, I don't remember how much Jaleel Okafor averaged. I don't remember how many assist ties averaged. I don't remember how many on um, whatever, but I can come back eight years later and – still feel like, you know, wow, we really won a national championship. And then I know the guys who played in 91 and 92 feel the same way. Yeah. And Battier and Jay Williams and Boozer feel the same way in 01 and Nolan and John and Kyle and Lance, all those guys feel the same way in 10. So um, I just think I always wanted to be a part of something special here. I didn't know what it would be. Obviously, you all want to be a first round pick, number one overall pick. You want to be an All-American. You want to be the best to ever play. But um, I like the championship, you know, captain a little a little better. No, yeah, that's not a bad thing to uh, to have in your in, in your years here. And I think you hit it on the head. Like, there's so many case studies of guys that you know, like made their name in March, and it just doesn't happen if your team loses in the first or second round. Right. Um, and especially dudes that you know, uh, like Dante Divincenzo comes to mind immediately. But these dudes that you know, like weren't even starters, yeah. and if you know. Uh, they don't have that run that he does in the in the um, tournament. You know what does his NBA career look like? So and there's right. like alternative uh, anecdotes as well. There's winning cures all, like you said. Um, can you speak a little bit about you know Coach Shire, your relationship with him? I never had him as a as an assistant. What was he like? He came here. He was my junior second year, year. My junior, junior year. year. My junior year okay. was his first year. Um, I want to say he was quote unquote a special assistant. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, obviously, like my brother played here, so um, I've known John since I was a kid. Yeah. And uh, just being like a, uh, he would call me a hoop junkie. Me and him always argue, <laughs> like me and him and, and Curry, well, we always argue who knows more hoops, obviously, and they know way more than me. But um, like seeing John, you know, I remember seeing him in 2005, um, and I seen him in the 06 McDonald's All American game, and just always been a fan of him. And him and Nolan have always been really, really, really close. So. Um, somebody I've always called a big brother. And obviously when he came on staff my junior year, you know, I was, we all were lucky to have him, but I definitely was, you know, so, so, so excited. Somebody I've always idolized to have access to every day. And he got promoted my next year when um, Coach Wojo left and uh, we won the championship. And, you know, he's just always been a big brother to me. Like, always been a big brother. And just seeing his, um, you know, evolution over the last couple of years. And not just saying this, but like I always said, like I didn't think he would, I didn't know he would get the, the Duke job, but I always knew that he would be a great head coach. Yeah. And I know, you know, when it hit the headline that he would, you know, be the next um, coach after Coach K, you know, I knew he was ready. Mm -hmm. I knew he was ready because he's always had that temperament and he's always been as competitive as anybody. We used to play pickup, we used to have shooting games, he would get, like, if we win, he would get just as mad as if he was still playing. we like, John, bro, you don't play no more, bro. Let us have it, bro. Let us keep our confidence, bro. But that's just how he is, and that's what makes him great. But so, so happy for him, and he supports me in anything that I do. He's always checking on me. He's always sending me um, little things we can debate about, you know, different players. So, you know, we're extremely, extremely close, and uh, I'm just so thankful for our relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then you mentioned um – the the heart to heart with Coach K. Uh, I was coached under him for for four years. Do you have any, you know, you have a favorite Coach K story? 
Mir Tanya. My favorite Coach K story. I'm sure you got a few. I have a couple, but um, I remember he uh, he got awarded, I think, Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year. It was my freshman year, and it was him and the late Pat Summit. They got honored in New York. So um, I think he had actually missed a practice for it. So um, he goes, and they have the, the big ceremony, the big dinner, and uh, it's all over ESPN, whatever, whatever. So he gets back the next, the next day, and he's telling us about it before we have film and practice. We're asking questions or whatever. And, you know, you see Coach K, you know, he, I was always just still in awe, like, that's Coach K. Like, I st even still to this day, I'm still just in awe just of his presence because obviously he's the greatest of all time. But he just always has this mystique to him, just like no nonsense, you know, just – but once you get to know him, he's just like <laughs> like funny. He keeps it light. So I remember he was showing pictures from that night, and it was a picture of him. And next to him it was LeBron on one side and Jay-Z on the other side. And he's like, man, you see, I'm cool. Like, I got Jay-Z coming out, LeBron comes to support me, and he's, they're all smiling. And then the next picture is him and Beyonce. And he's just blushing from like <laughs> ear to ear. He's just red and it was the funniest thing. And, and we all were laughing for at least like five minutes straight, man. It was funny, but it just showed like, it just humanizes him. Cause was, I was a freshman. So like, I was probably scared of him at this point, just from, you know, just being in awe. But you know, it just shows just, you know, how just cool and how down to earth he is. And he still is like that to this day. But, you know, I always remember that. We all, I always got a good laugh out of that, for sure. Yeah. Oh. Uh, before we move on from, from Duke, I have some quick, quick, quick hitting questions for you. Uh, that should be, you know, uh, whatever comes to, to your mind quick, uh, quickest here. First, favorite opposing gym to play in? In college, obviously all that Duke. College, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, Carolina. What was your record there? I am three, three and three and one. Yeah, yeah, heck yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like se uh, seven and one. No, no, no. I'm six and two because we lost at home my freshman year. Right. Yeah, so six and two. There we go. Uh, most sorry, favorite moment in Cameron. Favorite moment in Cameron. Um, my sophomore year, we lost to Miami. We're number one in the country. They we played them at Miami. They beat the crap out of us we had one of those hell weeks um, after that and it was something that <laughs> you know if we lost by 30 they slapped the floor and it was this whole big thing and we played them again um that uh later that season and uh they were like number three we probably number four and ron kelly who was one of our captains he broke his foot earlier that year so we didn't have him for majority of the year but this was first game back and he just went Berserk. I think he had like 34 points. He didn't practice. He practiced one time with us after missing three months. Went crazy. And then, um, man, I hit a three to put us up like maybe eight or like two minutes left. And then I remember me and Mason were talking we're like, yo, we're going to smack the floor today. Like, we're going to smack the floor. And those, those, that, those certain moments in Duke history where the whole team smacks the floor, it's like a, you know, it's like no bullshit, no nonsense. So, um, so grow, the floor. growing up, you knew that smacking the floor was a Duke thing. I didn't know that until All I right, got the yeah. until I committed. Do I didn't know? And nobody knows. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know that. We was talking to Woj, we had Woj on this podcast yeah. a few weeks ago, and uh, I told a story about that um, because I and it's not. I, I think we're just too young. Plus, it's just so yeah. big in like the basketball yeah, yeah, world now. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. But if you ask anybody who knows about '90s basketball, yeah. 2000, they won't know. But obviously, we're younger, so. Yeah, um, that was definitely my favorite moment in, in, in Cameron against nice. Miami. Uh, favorite teammate? Favorite teammate? Who? I got three. Okay. Tyler Thornton, Josh Harrison, and Jaleel Okafor. Here we go. Nice. Lastly, all-time Duke starting five. All-time Duke starting five. I gotta go. Nolan, Jeff Capel, Grant Hill. Ah, Jay Williams at the point. So Grant will be my four. And I'm gonna go a small. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Jod the five. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, uh, okay. I like that starting five. You'll be running. Yeah, we'll be running. We we run, push running, the ball running, up the court. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's move into to the transition to pro ball. So, uh, you win national championship 2015. Um, what's the end of the year like to that summer, to that yeah. first um, experience in the league? Can you take me through yeah. that process yeah. um, and all that? Yeah, man. So, it was funny. Like, I never thought that I would win a national championship. That was the goal. But after my first three years, obviously, it's like, man, I don't – but we get it done. I ended up being an All-American, so I had some traction going into my professional career. Got an opportunity with Cleveland early. Um, got cut the last day. Uh, went to the D-League, turned down some big offers overseas because obviously the biggest dream for me was playing in the NBA. So wanted to stick that out. Ended up getting rookie of the year MVP my first year. Um, got an opportunity with Dallas the next year on a 10-day. Um, end up sticking with New Orleans the next year. and. Uh, Played in New Orleans, got first team all summer league the next year, thinking I'm going to sign a nice deal. They get Rondo and they get Darius Miller. I get cut again. Then I signed with Golden State the next year. Um, played two years there, won a championship, lost in the finals. Then I signed another nice deal with, with the Lakers and uh, won a championship with them. And uh, so I'm entering my ninth year professionally, seven years in the league. And uh, still trying to grind, man. Still kind of feel like where I am now, like I went to China for a month last season and uh, had a good showing out there, but wanted to come back and get an NBA another try. So I feel fresh, like I feel fresh, like like I'm fresh out of college right now. This whole summer has just been me working out, me auditioning for teams, me interviewing with teams. I went to Vegas and worked out and had some nice interviews and stuff. So kind of felt like I was doing the, the draft process over again, so which was fun and it's refreshing. Yeah. But like I, was, like I was telling Caleb and, and, and Jeremy um, at – K Academy was just like, man, I'm in the same boat y'all in. You know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to get, trying to get, like, it's 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 one thing to to get to the NBA, and it's another thing to stay in the NBA. Yeah. So and then for me, it's like, man, like I done won championships, I done hit game winners and finals, I done scored a lot of points. So it's a different um, dynamic, but it's been it's been motivating, and uh, so like I'm still trying to get up. Like when when Ty and, and Jaren was like, man, we got up at. 6.30 lift, I'm like, man, I'm on the same thing y'all on. So yeah. we're kind of fighting the same battle. So uh, being, being a professional has been fun. Yeah, to go back to that first, you mentioned, um, you know, those first whatever year or two outside of college. Uh, you talked about, like, getting cut on that last day. Everybody talks about how much more of a business it is yeah. when you get to the league. How do you stay confident and, like, you know, those yeah. moments got to be demoralizing. But does it feel different than college, the way that, you know, you're kind of treated as more of – I don't want to say an asset, but you know, yeah. like you're, you can be cut of that last yeah, day. Yeah. Uh, what's going I, through your head in that moment? I mean, it's definitely different. I mean, like, I didn't want to spill uh, tonight when I got up and talked, but college is like, man, it's it's more of a family. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like they really honestly care about you. You know, the, from everybody, your coach to like, you live with your teammates. Like, yeah. it's not like in the NBA. It's all right. We go to the gym. Cool. Practice over at two, you're going to your family. Very rarely, like, you'll hang out with your teammates in your city. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, obviously, you know, when you're on the road, you're in a hotel, you go to whatever. But yeah. in your city, like, everybody goes kind of to mm -hmm. their families. But in college, it's like, man, you, you walk to practice with your teammates. You in study hall. You might got classes with your teammates. Yeah. You go back to the dorm. You go back to your apartment with your teammates. It's just more of a family. Your advisor, I know Kenny King was like <laughs> – uh, a big brother to me. I mean, cause he like he'll make sure I was up for class. He'll make sure I was in class. He he make sure I wasn't BS in the study hall. Just everything. It, it was more about your personal life and more about you. And like I said, man, it's a business. And I got cut the last day. They didn't, it's not like they're gonna check on you after. They don't, yeah. They don't care because it's a business, a revolving door. Which it's not. That's the that's the that's the nature of the business. It's not like they're bad people, but it is who it is. It is what it is. And it's like. Teams that I played on professionally, like GMs won't reach out to you to see how you're doing three years removed. You know, yeah. Coach K sends me a letter every birthday. He texts me every birthday, every Father's Day, every mm -hmm. anniversary, every Miss LA, Miss Jerry. I mean, Dad, everybody still kind of, and I'm eight years removed. So yeah. that just kind of shows you the difference of the dynamic between being here at Duke and then being a professional. Yeah. Um, 
we'll get into the to the championships. You know, what have you learned throughout? You've been in a number of different teams, different places. Yeah. You went over to to China. You know, what are the biggest things you've kind of taken away? At, at, not necessarily advice you'd give to people, but what are the biggest things you've kind of taken notice of and feel like you've learned throughout this pro career? Yeah, it's been so much, but uh, how advanced, um, I think, uh, you know, my upbringing, just being from where I'm from, um, we, I went to a high school where we ran college practices. Like we ran, mm -hmm. you know, elite level shell drills. Um, I went to Oak Hill where we traveled, you know, nationally and I had to live by myself. So it was really like a extra year of college, but once I got to college and left, like the verbiage that coach and and all the other coaches that was being taught here was the same things that was being taught to LeBron, that was being taught to Kobe, that was being taught to all the pros. So, like once I got to the pros, it was it was really 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 an easy transi uh, transition for me just because coach had been prepping us for this the last four years especially myself being a point guard. And the biggest thing that he used to harp on me was about being in the best shape and being, you know, the most talkative person out there. And that just... was always that was always a plus for me. Like, scouts and coaches always tell me, man, you talk like you're a leader. Like, you know, you're a rookie, but you, know, you communicate really, really well. I'm like, man, I, I couldn't get on the court <laughs> if, <laughs> if I didn't do that. I'm getting yelled at. I'm getting cussed out. So. I was just so prepared just for, and then the spotlight's always on you. Obviously, you know, being at Duke, you're on ESPN every night. You, mm -hmm. you have way more national televised games than every NBA team besides the Lakers, Warriors, and the Celtics, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So you're under that spotlight, so it gets you prepared for that. And it got me prepared to play for two really, really big franchises. So let me ask you this then. I'm sure you've had, you know, peers, high school teammates, uh, like teammates in the league. Do you think if you went elsewhere, you'd have that same kind of preparation? You think Duke players have a leg up when they're entering the league just because of that? I think they do. Um, Cause obviously like, I mean, we're the most paid attention to. Mm -hmm. um, out of any, no shade to anybody, but everybody knows what's going on with Duke. Um, yeah. Even when I was in high school, when I was in middle school, when I was in college, when Duke lost, I don't care if it was only only thing that would have topped it was the Super Bowl finals or anything. But like when Duke lost, it's the first thing on Sports Center. Mm -hmm. Every it's going to like like a tie in. Jaron was talking about how Clemson yeah stormed the court stormed the court like they were, were undefeated and all that stuff. They were favored so like, by like they five. They were favored, yeah. but like we're still Duke. Yeah, it doesn't you matter. Know what I'm saying and like anytime we lost on the road, it's we getting to stone the court, but that's the standard that mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Coaches, Coach K's built, and John is is is, is building. So um, it's just that standard that we have, and I don't think any other university has that standard, in, in my opinion. Yeah. No. Um, let's get into the championships. Uh, obviously, two rings. Congrats. Thank you. Um, what you know about those teams? Two very different teams. Yep. Uh, one was in the bubble. Like one a, was in a bubble, 2020. Uh, was let's 2020. start with that, I guess. Yeah. Talk me through, first of all, the bubble in general, because yeah. so many people have different takes on it. What's yeah. What was your experience like? Well, it was fun, man. I obviously, you know, COVID, you know, shut the world down. And, you know, my team, our team was was pissed because we were the best team in the league mm. at that point. So uh, we had just beat Milwaukee and we had just beat the Clippers and we kind of showed the world, like, you know, we were the best team in the league. And then, obviously, COVID happened. and. Just to get the season back, I think we were thankful. But you know, guys in the bubble didn't want to be there. Yeah. And we smelled blood. Like, um, you know, the way Braun kind of prepared us, and the way um, you know we kind of just stayed together. Like, you'll see different guys from different teams. Might be two of them at a time, or somebody by themselves. But like when you saw the Lakers, it was at least four or five of us together at all times, and uh, we just stayed together. And uh, you know, we got it done. You know, that was my um, second championship. But, you know, I just wish the fans could, like, got rewarded with a parade. That's the only thing that, that kind of makes me feel bad, you know, because I think yeah. the city of Los Angeles, those Lakers fans are the best fans in the world um, when it comes to the NBA. So, um, but we got it done for them. So, that was yeah. fun. Who's orchestrating that in the bubble, like, walking around being more of a team? Is it the veterans of LeBron, or is it yeah. just a collective effort? I'm not going to lie, because I played with LeBron in Cleveland my first year, so that's just how he is. But, um, like, that was, like, the first team that I had been on in the pros where, like, 
we literally did everything together. Like when we touched down on the road, guys were going straight to dinner, all of us. We're going to the movies, like we're doing everything together. And it was organic, it was genuine. And uh, so it's not like Bron or AD had to say, let's all stick together. When we get to the bubble, it was just the nature of our team. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That might not have been the nature of any other teams, but you know, that was very, very visible. Um, that everybody would point out, it was like the Lakers, you know, we'd be seven, eight deep going to dinner or going fishing, doing whatever, so. Yeah, I mean, I think he's, he's my goat. Yep. Do you have a best LeBron story? My best LeBron story? Well, my best LeBron story is actually playing against them. Okay. Um, game one of the finals, when I played with the Warriors, we played um, his team, Cleveland. Eight eight. Yeah. yeah, and it was felt like 70, 20, <laughs> and 30. Um, but i never forget it because I was his rookie, but I remember him and Draymond got into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, anytime like we play against each other, like I'm always talking to him on the bench, and he comes over. And Jeremiah like hit him in the eye, and his eye was like bloodshot red. And he comes over he's like, "Come on, you better tell him to chill." I'm like, "Man, stall him out, bro. We, we, it's a good game, on. Man, you better tell him to chill." Man, he ran off like 13, 14 straight. Then after his last like three, like he shot up from like Steph range, Dame little range. He looks at me, he's like, "I told you." And everybody's like, "Damn, why you get him started?" <laughs> Like, man, I was Draymond. That wasn't me. Like, why y'all get mad at me? I ain't even got in the game. Like, but nah, I mean, we always had that rapport, man. Before I even went back to the Lakers, like, we always had that rapport. He's always been a big brother to me. So, yeah. but just to see him, like, like my idol, like, see him, like, put on a show like that, that was historic. And obviously, like, we wanted to win, but it was just, you become a fan at that point because, like, man, you're really witnessing greatness. So, yeah. um, he's my goat as well. So. <laughs> Uh, they have an interesting dynamic relationship. Draymond and LeBron yeah. are like are like very good friends, yeah. correct? Yeah. But yeah. they're both obviously alphas in their own, and yeah. you know them both personally. So it's it's funny to watch it from afar via social yeah. media. The, yeah. the interactions they have. Yeah. Um, so let's move. I guess it's uh, backwards to your time, mm -hmm. your chip in uh, Golden State. How did that team differ? Was it just like the the level of talent? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I got to the Lakers, it was a fresh new team. Yep. It was only like three three guys returning. I think Kuz, Braun, and Caruso. Yeah. Those were the only guys returning. So it was a whole fresh team. Um, on the Warriors, you know, they had already won two championships in the last three years. So um, it was kind of different. But um, I could say that that summer. Before I got to the Golden State, I was in New Orleans and like kind of like my senior year at Duke. As soon as our New Orleans season ended, like we didn't make the playoffs, I went home for like a week, mm -hmm. came back. I never left. Like I was in the gym. Like that was probably my most productive summer since 2014, getting ready for 2015, my senior year. And uh, I kind of took that approach. Um, and I'm saying that to say I got cut from Cle uh, from New Orleans after I had the summer I had, and I fell into Golden State. And not knowing Steph would get hurt, mm -hmm. 40 games, not, but, you know, I was ready. Yeah. And I go from being cut by New Orleans to scoring 30, 28, 25 with one of my best friends in the world, KD. It was just like surreal with the defending champion. So, but I, I say that I said I was ready. Yeah. And, and I think being at Duke prepared me for that, being at that national spotlight, being – you know, the talk of the basketball, you know, world, um, that got me ready for that Golden State run. And that's something I, I'd say proudly because I honestly, like, I could really contribute yeah. to that championship. And even when Steph came back in the playoffs until the, until the finals, like, I was in a rotation every series, every game, and I really was a key contributor on that championship team. So that's probably my proudest, you know, cham NBA championship for sure. Yeah. What what's going through your head? Because uh, there's so many instances like that where you might be a, a sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth guy off the bench. Somebody goes down, yeah. and you know you realize this is your shot. Steph yeah. goes down for 40 games, whatever. You know, do, do you feel that sense of pressure? Is it exciting for you? Was it, you know, can you feel it in the moment? Like yeah. this is this is big for me. Yeah. What's crazy is it's it's crazy that we're doing this because um, I got the news my first start, and I'm gonna ask DB what game it was, but. Um, Steph got hurt against New Orleans. We fly to Charlotte, and 
obviously we're West, we're a West Coast team, so it's my only time in Charlotte. So Duke had a game that night. So I got a driver. I'm on the way to Durham from Charlotte, and I get a text from Steve Kerr <laughs> saying I'm starting you. <laughs> so I'm at the game. Like I couldn't even enjoy the Duke game. Like I'm sitting with Debbie. I can't even enjoy the game because I'm like, dang, I got guard Campbell walking tomorrow. <laughs> it's my first start in my NBA career. And I remember talking to Coach after, and just like, man, you, you built for it. This is what you do. Like, mm -hmm. So he gave me that confidence. I took that ride back and played really well. Yeah. I was ready. And uh, it, it was no looking back from there. And I had a nice run that time. Steph came back um, and re-injured his, his, his ankle. Then he got hurt again, hurt his knee. And then by that time, I was just was – I just was – you know, I had some 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 really 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 good games that prepared us to the playoffs, and we got it done. But like I said, I, I was ready at that point. Yeah, and uh, just to even it out, I asked about the best LeBron story. You have a best yeah. Steph Curry story? Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I assume he's fun to learn from. Just yeah. obviously playing yeah. like LeBron's a yeah. positionless player, but yeah. to learn from Steph from you, I'm sure is pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, my favorite Steph story. Um. Well, I have I, I have two that really come to mind, but I think uh, I would say I had like 19 in the first half against New Orleans, and uh, he was like at the arena, but mm -hmm. he was like watching in the back because he didn't want to come. Obviously, it'd be a distraction if he comes to the. Yeah. So he was watching in the back, and I had 19 in the first half. In the third quarter, I probably took one shot, so I came out with like two minutes left. And like, I get a tap on my shoulder. It's like, man, Steph wants you to come to the back. I'm like, bro, like, what do you mean? Back is in like, like added, like, 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 like the come, tunnel. Come, come back to the tunnel. <laughs> and he's like, bro, if you don't shoot the ball, like, we need you to score. So I end up like, I think I and finished with like 28 or whatever. But just to, just for him, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm his teammate, but I'm like still a fan. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, I just be like. Dang, this is crazy. But the other the other story was we were playing Houston game six, 2019, um, second round. We were up three to two. This is our first game without KD when he hurt his calf. And Steph had zero in the first court, first half. He had zero. Mm -hmm. And uh I'm sitting next to him in the in the in the in the locker room and he's laughing. Bro. And Houston is giving us problems. Like Houston, like we Took them to seven the year before that, mm -hmm. yeah. and like they they I think they beat us three to one um, in the regular season. So KD goes down and we're losing. You got zero now, so you laughing. So I'm like, bro, what you on? Like I'm not I'm not saying it's on. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm like, bro, what you on, bro? Like, man, he's just laughing. He's laughing. He's like not even he scores 36 in the second half. Takes us to the Western Conference Finals. We end up going to the finals, but just like. Just to see his, like, he has zero. He's probably 0 for 8, 0 for 9. And he's just calm, cool, collected. It's just like yeah. a game to him, literally a game to him. That's how good That's he incredible. is. And Shoot. just for him to turn on at that moment was just something that I'm like, man, he was laughing at that time. He wasn't even tripping. Like, he didn't even care. Like, that's how good he is. So, nah, just to be around players like that is definitely stories I can tell my grandkids and stuff. So, oh, that's awesome. Um, I know you got a 5 a.m. flight, so let's uh, let's wrap this up for some with some uh, DMV sports trivia. I got six questions for you here. Okay. Um, start here at the Washington Wizards. Um, sorry, do you know the Washington Wizards all-time leading scorer? It's not Brad because he, he just got traded. He's like real short. I don't know the name. Wes on sale? Mm -mm. Never even heard of the guy. El Elvin it? Hayes. Elvin Hayes, okay. 15,000. Dang. In interesting note here, Brad Beal's only 160 points out. Dang. Yeah, so I knew he was close. he's right there. Um, didn't know this either. Do you know who the Baltimore Bullet is? Who the Baltimore Bullet is? Yeah. It's a person? It's a, yeah, an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, this. Uh, we got this off no. of uh, DMV. Yeah. Michael Phelps? Yeah. Is he from the? Did you know he's from the DMV? I know he's from Baltimore. <laughs> oh yeah, he's probably from Baltimore. If he's a Baltimore bullet. The, uh, DB. the Washington Capitals all-time leading scorer. Ovechkin. Yep. Ovi. 
Uh, what high school did Duke legend Johnny Dawkins attend? Um, um, he played for Stu Vetter. What did it start with? M. Um, oh my gosh, they're going to kill me. What is it? It's Catholic school. M, Catholic. What is it? Mackin Catholic. Nah, I would have got that wrong. <laughs> he played for Stu. I don't even know he played for Stu better. I might have got that wrong too. I don't know. Um, all right. Fifth question. What is the name of the horse racing track in Maryland that hosts the Preakness Stakes, the second leg of the Triple Crown? What's the name of the... The track. <laughs> you don't bet on horses? No. I don't gamble. I don't gamble. <laughs> um, I don't know. The Pimlico. I don't know anything about it. I'm reading these questions. I don't know a thing about the DMV here. Uh, I would have, to make you feel we'll better, some, I would have we'll gotten anything. some either. basketball questions. Uh, what year did the Ravens win their first Super Bowl, and who led the team in rushing? Their first Super Bowl, um, 2000, 2000? 2001? 2001 is correct. And Jamal Lewis. Yes. Yeah, I knew that. I knew there that. we go. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. All right, that'll end it on a high note. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, we'll get you to bed because I know you're getting up early for that flight. Yeah. Uh, can't thank you enough for doing this and also just you know coming to dinner tonight. Yes, sir. Um, like I said, the 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 brother is a real thing and it means a ton to my you know my teammates and I, especially just to just to sit here and learn from you guys, yeah. but hear you talk about your experience, see you guys still so close together after you know whatever it's been eight years so it's a big deal and it doesn't it doesn't you know our guys don't take it lightly so appreciate, it. appreciate you being here and, and doing everything you do for the program man good sure. luck this Thank year you, man good luck this year too man appreciate you